a while back I made a video called be a better trainer or something like that. Basically like things to help you improve how you train people. And in that video, I talked about something briefly called sink or swim, having like a sink or swim mentality. I wanted to kind of touch on this idea of poor training and some of the nuances around it. If you are working at a place and you are receiving poor training, there's a lot of things that can cause this. One of the main things is the maybe the person themselves haven't been trained. So it's kind of like a blind leading the blind situation, especially if turnover is really high, which that is actually a sign of a toxic workplace. Turnover is really high. So they have somebody come in, they've only been there for a month or two, and they're, they're actually the most qualified to train the next person, but they haven't had any training. Like just because you know how to play guitar doesn't mean you know how to teach somebody else to play guitar. If you learned guitar by just listening to the radio and playing, that's pretty much the advice that you're gonna give somebody else. Whereas somebody that went to music school is gonna have different a different set of advice. When it comes to training when it, with food, there is only one way to get a specific result. So, and what I mean by that is a medium steak is going to be the same temperature no matter where you go. It's always going to be medium. A lot of times when customers come in, they don't actually even know what they want. They think they want a medium because they went into a place and they were actually getting a medium rare. So then they order a medium and they say it's overcooked when it's actually cooked perfectly. That's how that happens, by the way. That is a minor example of, of a more systemic problem that happens when other cooks are being trained. But this can really, like, this is really serious because this can impact food safety. It can impact overall employee turnover because people that aren't trained correctly might get overwhelmed easier with a smaller amount of tickets. I mean, the food quality is going to go down and the consistency. You have a, a chicken Florentine on the menu and you have everybody making it differently because nobody was trained correctly on how to do it. Really, wherever you go, the training is like the foundation. It is like the most important thing. If your foundation is messed up and you learn something the wrong way, you're not just going to perform poorly at that restaurant, but you're going to go to another restaurant thinking that that's how you do things. A really easy example is flipping pans on the cold bar. This is something that is done in most restaurants that have cold bars. Any, even like a Pizza Hut or something like that. If they have a cold bar, flipping pans is like a very standard thing. So when you flip pans, a lot of the times, the exception is if you just pulled something like a, you have a pan with cheese in it and you pulled a brand new pan like an hour before it closed, that you, you're not really responsible. Most places aren't gonna have you like flip that pan, right? There is one place that I worked at years back where I started flipping the pans on the cold bar and they got pissed at me because I was creating quote unquote extra work even though I was going to be the one that ran them through the dish machine anyway. And I don't even wanna talk about what the dates were on some of those pans. And I was just hoping that maybe those were just stickers that didn't get washed off, but that's probably not the case. So when we are learning a new skill or when, whenever we're just learning anything, it doesn't even have to be a cook, there are things that we know, things that we don't know, and things that we don't know that we don't know. So uh, I could get into the Dunning-Kruger effect a little bit, but suffice it to say that there are cooks that when they come into a place, there's a certain amount of knowledge that they have from past experiences or something that they've picked up along the way from their house, if they were a home cook. Maybe all they learned was how to cook spaghetti, but it is something they, they come in with their base skill set. When they come into the restaurant, they have their base skill set, but there's a lot of things that they don't even know that they don't know yet. For example, there could be somebody that's watching this right now that has never even heard of a blast chiller, has never seen one before in their life. And because of that, they need a step-by-step -step guide on how to use the blast chiller. What's the difference when you just throw something in the blast chiller without a probe? What's the difference between putting something in the walk-in to cool and putting it in a blast chiller? What are the settings? What type of blast chiller is it? What exactly does it do? All of these things are things that the new cook will need a run through on. This is one of this is just one of many reasons why I absolutely hate sink or swim mentality because what'll happen is they get thrown onto the line. They have a really rough day. Maybe they start out on salad station because that's typically the easiest in most kitchens, but they aren't trained on anything else. So one day they get told to par fry off some chicken wings or to take this item that we made and put it in the blast chiller. 
and they don't know how to use it. In a regular environment, you would just go, oh, you, you haven't been shown how to do that yet. All right, let's go do it. We'll do a run through right now. But in these environments where training is very poor, they will get like frustrated that they have to show them how to use the blast chiller. Then what happens is it has a chilling effect on the new cook. Now the new cook is less likely to ask questions. If something is brought up that previously wasn't understood, they are under the impression now that it's going to receive some kind of pushback or some kind of negative attention, right? So they usually will start clamming up at that point. Then they make a mistake. They screw something up maybe really bad because they didn't ask but then they get in trouble for not asking questions so you see it creates this thing where they are damned if they do and damned if they don't so what do you do in a city it causes a lot of stress a lot of irritation and this is a symptom of mismanagement the way that i like to approach training is the same way that when you're giving a speech you want to tell them what you're going to tell them tell them, tell them what you told them. And then you also want to have them demo it back to you and train you on how to do it. They've never julienned carrots before. You have a process at your restaurant for how you do that. You explain to them, hey, today I'm gonna show you how to julienne carrots. This is gonna apply to most things that we julienne here in the restaurant. Come over really quick, I'm gonna demo how to do this really quick. You demo how to do it, explain in detail what you're doing. You can even explain the measurement of the cuts if you want. You don't have to, but it just depends. Just so they have the general size down. Any nuances with the rules, all of that kind of stuff. Let them do it for a while, then come back and check on them. If it is a more important skill, like maybe you guys make a Mornay sauce, tell them you're gonna show them how to make a Mornay. Give them a step-by-step -step guide on how to make the Mornay, whether it's verbal or whatever. Then when it comes time for them to make the Mornay, be like, all right, I want you to teach me how to make the Mornay sauce. And then they have to walk you step by step through making the Mornay. A couple other things. One thing that you can do that's extremely effective is the first however many days, you can gauge each candidate. You can gauge each new cook by how fast they're progressing. Start out by assigning them somebody and they are to shadow them. They do everything with this person. So you want to start them out on salads, like I said, because it's the easiest. So you assign them the chef that works at the salad station, and that chef is responsible for teaching them everything they know about salad station. They go on break with that person. They prep with that person. They shut down with that person. Everything. They want to learn it line by line. Another thing you can do that's really awesome, especially on their first night. And as long as it's not on like a Friday or Saturday, this is what I would do as a sous chef or executive chef. It was my favorite way to train, start them on expo. And they are up on expo with you because then they get to see everything come together. They learn the timings on the fries. They get to see when somebody else drops an eight ounce filet that's at a midwell temp and the call outs that have to happen if it's gonna be served with a baked potato or a fry or whatever. They get to see how things are assembled come together, what the what the plate actually looks like. You start them on there for like the first week or two and then they can move on to like, you know, whatever station, saute or salad or whatever. What's really sad is that in a poor training environment, a lot of that shadowing and stuff, that, that never takes place. You also want to have some version of a one-on-one -on -one with this new cook. If you are the new cook watching this, they should be taking time to have a chat with you. And it shouldn't feel aggressive it shouldn't feel mean it should just be like a hey this is where we're at the one-on-one -on -one should consist of like where you're at with your training and the new things that are going to come down the line maybe discuss like new menu items that you're thinking about ask them if they have any ideas for specials like all that kind of stuff in my opinion people that have the sink or swim mentality just don't know how to train usually if they don't know how to train it's because they weren't trained themselves or they weren't shown how to do that where there's no structure in the restaurant and a lack of structure can kill a restaurant there are managers right now that use the excuse of autonomy and they say that you have the autonomy and freedom to do whatever you want however you want as long as it gets done now this works to a degree but having things like standardized recipes in your restaurant are extremely important for consistency reasons because when a guest comes in and they say you make lasagna one person makes lasagna one way, another person makes lasagna another way. Typically the lasagna is made with ricotta cheese, but one day a random cook comes in 
and they get told to make lasagna have you made lasagna before yeah all right so we need this many pans of lasagna go to it and they start using cottage cheese because their mom used cottage cheese and that's just the way that they learned how to do it completely horribly wrong but i'm just giving an example of why consistency and having standardized recipes is important it allows you to hold something up that says look this is what we're doing this is what we're following this is how much we need take this recipe do a single batch or make two or three or four or however many times batch whatever i understand why people might be worried about losing freedom or the feeling of being able to do whatever you want and like be creative and stuff but here's the thing just because you have one thing doesn't mean you don't have the other thing just because you have structure it doesn't mean that there can't be autonomy and R&D and specials that can be created and menu items or, or run a whole special menu one night or whatever. I feel like when improper training is in a restaurant, rather than setting the new cooks up for success, they're being set up for failure. And it's really unfortunate because a lot of times, whether it's stories I've heard or things I've experienced personally, you have a lot of cooks that have an awesome potential and a very strong ability and a big drive to learn how to do this and do it right and they end up quitting because there's no communication because the managers feel like they're only supposed to manage certain people because the managers play favorites or because the managers are soft and they don't know how to talk to certain people about certain things or they let brown nosers get away with it so i mean it can go a lot further than training i actually did a whole video on a toxic work environment you can check it out it should be popping up right about now so what do you do if you're one of these new cooks and you are not getting the training that you need you showed up and they aren't teaching you things they aren't showing you things as far as learning to cook the menu items at the restaurant there isn't much i can tell you because the problem is that restaurant should have their crap together enough to have recipes for you to follow and have ways for you to do things. I will say this, if you do work at, if you're just starting out and you work at a place like an Applebee's or a Perkins or a Ruby Tuesday or, or any of those kind of restaurants and you aren't receiving the proper training, you can go seek that training out yourself by getting a hold of a menu, getting a hold of a recipe book and learning the menu items start paying one of the first things you can do is start paying attention to what specific things are ordered most often because you might have a menu that has a hundred items on it and only 20 of them get regularly ordered learn those first and then you could start working on the ones that aren't known as much if nothing else cooks are always in high demand you're new enough in the industry that any experience you get is going to be good experience and even a bad job will teach you something and it will teach you about what not to look for in a restaurant. And it might give you an idea of the kinds of questions you can ask in order to avoid working for one of these places. You can go into the interview and when they, when they give you that like, well, do you have any questions for me? You could ask about their training pr processes and procedures. You can actually go to an interview now with the information from this bad job and ask very pointed questions about the training environment. What's the training schedule like? What do you guys do? Like, okay, I, I show up for my first week. What do, uh, what am I going to be doing? So I hope that helped answer some questions about poor training. Like I said, if you want to watch a video on how to be a better trainer, that should be popping up here any second now. But uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful, amazing day. And I'll see you on the next one.